Welcome to this uh, coffee break conversation on Baltic Sea region cooperation. Uh, I'm Stefan Eriksson, uh, Director of Nordic Council of Ministers Office here in Latvia. Uh, I have a prominent panel here on my side uh, with Janeta Ozolina, uh, well known to Latvians, of course, uh, and not only Latvians, Vice Chairman of Latvian Transatlantic Organization and Professor of uh, Political Science at University of Latvia and also uh, a prominent uh, Danish diplomat, Per Carlsen, uh, who has been Danish ambassador in uh, Russia, in Latvia, uh, has also been involved in the Baltic Development Forum at the long moment. Long time ago. Yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah, at the so moment, long. <laughs> senior advisor of uh, the Foreign Policy Society. Correct, yeah. So, uh, the theme of our conversation is Baltic Sea Region Cooperation. Uh, there's a long description, uh, 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 but uh, my interpretation is that we will try to talk about current conditions, future possibilities for cooperation among the states in the region, as well as for the region on a global scale. Uh, we've been listening to sessions these two days about um, political and security challenges globally in Europe, NATO, of course Russia has come up. Uh, and uh, most seem to agree that we are facing uh, risks of instability on several continents at the same time. The world crisis has popped up a couple of times uh, during the discussions. Uh, so my intention is that we try to take the discussion down a little bit to the region closest to us, the Baltic Sea region. Um, what can be done on this regional level to promote cooperation, stability, considering the challenges or maybe even crisis that we face on the global arena. Well, as we all know, there are several existing regional cooperation structures. I represent NCM, or Nordic Council of Ministers, a Nordic intergovernmental organization that since the 90s have had close ties with the Baltics, um, and the offices that are present in the Baltic states uh, is a proof of that. There is also an office in St. Petersburg, I should say. Uh, there are also others, like the Arctic Council, the Borens, uh, Borens Euro Arctic Council, um, as well as CBSS, of course. And I would like to start with that, uh, Council of Baltic Sea States. Uh, Janeta, you have recently been a uh, rapporteur for the CBS uh, report uh, about a vision for the Baltic Sea region beyond 2020. Um, it was presented during the Swedish presidency uh, in June 2018. Um, then came further reflection and consideration during the Latvian presidency, uh, which has resulted in a roadmap for CBSS reforms. Uh, what in particular would you like to highlight from the vision report uh, that's relevant, well, not only for the CBSS, but for Baltic Sea re region uh, cooperation in general? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Stefan. Actually, I would like to start with a quick uh, answer to your remark on uh, what was debated during those two days here uh, in the Riga conference and how it applies to the Baltic Sea region. Actually, we could copy paste everything was said <laughs> regarding global matters and place it into the Baltic Sea region. So everything works here. So, and on the one hand, we could say, okay, we do not have to rediscover the world. We just take uh, some of the most important relevant ideas and recommendations and apply it here. But on the other hand, it's very confusing and actually even very scary uh, conclusion. Can you imagine something what is happening in China, in Middle East, uh, in Northern Africa? It's also here. Uh, next door. So therefore probably we have to be really very serious about what's happening in our part of the world. And uh, the vision report which you just referred to uh, is very much going along those lines. Council of the Baltic Sea states it's intergovernmental institution like Nordic Council of Ministers and there are certain limits how far the council can go. It cannot approach all issues, uh, it cannot probably address different sectors of our societies. So there are certain limitations which contain the performance of the CBSS. But on the other hand, actually the whole exercise drafting this report was very uh, interesting and very creative because on the one hand, uh, CBSS, but also representatives of governments, they wanted uh, to discuss regional issues. But on the other hand, there was a very pressing matter 
in order to make CBSS more effective and, and, and more visible, uh, what was important, it was also discussion about the reform of institution itself. So therefore, we were caught in two big discussion boxes, <laughs> so one on the region, one on the CBSS. Uh, and what was really surprising is that we started very much from critical perspective. What hasn't been done? It was very much like uh, during the first session of Riga conference when we debated EU issues mm -hmm. and Andres Tras from the world, Latvia's bank, he said, oh, why you are so critical? There is so much of strength in the EU. And this was exactly the path of drafting this report. We started from critical perspective, and suddenly we realized that actually there's much more mm -hmm. what to discuss and actually even mention as an account of what has been achieved. So uh, therefore, uh, doing this some kind of a very quick uh, audit of what was happening in the Baltic Sea region, uh, we actually identified, if I may mention just two mm -hmm. critical yeah, points. Sure. Uh, one critical point is that CBSS was created to integrate more Russia into regional affairs. Uh, and it looks that uh, Russia has certain reservations to participate in the whole spectrum of the CBSS activities. It's more like cherry picking uh, approach. Uh, and in that respect was one of those critical conclusions that the Baltic Sea region is getting again remilitarized in comparison with the beginning of 90s. Uh, and uh, then there was um, another some kind of a big uh, topic uh, on the table uh, and uh, the topic was that everybody is expecting that CBSS is going to solve all issues. Uh, that is some kind of uh, a, a golden box with a lot of money which just requires a little bit of efforts. And then we came to another big uh, question of what to do with the CBSS uh, secretariat, which is executive body of the council, but this ex secretariat has very limited power. So if uh, member states, or countries of the CBSS would like to see uh, the region to be governed in more effective way. Uh, so secretariat has to be given additional uh, functions and additional power, which actually was recommended here in the report. And it was also taken over by action plan. So uh, there will be reforms of the CBSS. So of course, I could go on and on, but <laughs> I just mentioned a few. <laughs> Very interesting. I, I want to turn to you, Per. I mean, you're not a civil servant any longer, but, nope. but still, uh, <laughs> I, I want to ask you what, what, what do you think can be expected from the new Danish uh, CBSS presidency that ha has just started uh, when, it, when it comes to CBSS, but also uh, uh, when it comes to Baltic cooperation in general. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the new Danish foreign minister, uh, Jeppe Kufud, uh, is a warm supporter of Baltic Sea cooperation. He, he happens to have been born on a, an island in the Baltic mm, Sea, mm. Uh, Bornholm. Uh, um, I read uh, uh, something uh, that came out from uh, the Danish foreign ministry where, where they uh, uh, mentioned flexibility as, as one key word. A little bit was what you also mm -hmm. have been talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the minister also uh, mentioned that adding a Scandinavian minimalist touch to the way CBSS works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> could you help us uh, explain maybe what, what he has in mind? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the last, <laughs> the last yeah. sentence. Um, I have known Jeppe Kofo for, for many years. And as you said, he, he was born on the island in the middle of the Baltics. Uh, Swedes mm -hmm. thinks that they have an island in the middle of the Baltics. We also have. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and there, uh, already 30 years ago, he was very much engaged in uh, in what is happening in uh, in this uh, in this region, so I'm sure that he will uh, he will give he will give much effort uh, to uh, to the Danish uh, chairmanship. As you told, I was in the old days uh, engaged in the in the military cooperation, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy uh, to be over here again to see Danish uniforms and uh, and we have people in uh, uh, in uh, in Estonia. We have somebody at the headquarters here, and we have. We have planes in uh, Lithuania from time to time, uh, but there is a lot to do on the soft security side. I've been working in something called Baltic Development Forum until uh, one and a half years ago, and there was uh, indeed an interest from the regions in Russia uh, mm -hmm. for more cooperation from Kaliningrad and Pskov and, uh, 
and mm -hmm. St. Petersburg. And, and uh, as you said, sometimes the problem was uh, more in Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Nordic Council of uh, Ministers knows about that, uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, there were some limits to how far you could go. Mm -hmm. I think we should, we should try again. Uh, it's not the first time to engage our Russian friends more in, in soft security issues, uh, environment issues, uh, trafficking, uh, whatever we have, we have been trying before to, uh, to get it up and running. We, we cannot escape our, our geography. Mm -hmm. uh, they are there, so uh, we should give it a try. Mm -hmm. No, I should say that the Nordic, Nordic Council Minister still is engaged in Russia. We still have an office know, in St. Petersburg. I know, I know but, but, you, but uh, you had some problems in St. Petersburg. Well, there, there have been some <laughs> problems, you're right. Uh, our new uh, Secretary General, uh, Paula Lektomaki, mm. has recently been in, yeah. in, uh, in Russia, actually. Yeah. I don't know if she managed to change anything uh, uh, with the current situation, but, but we, we will see. Uh, I noticed in, in, the, in the report, in the vision report, that one uh, recommendation is um, about coherence and coordination among other regional stakeholders like, well, NCM, I mentioned one, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of others. Uh, um, is this possible? I mean, considering the history of, of, uh, of all these organizations, I mean, it's not the first time probably we, we have heard this uh, uh, mm -hmm. and everyone probably agrees that it's desirable to strive for mm -hmm. it, but, but how far can coordina coordination go in this field? Uh, yes, we had a lot of discussions yeah. <laughs> about this recommendation and there were different opinions on that. Uh, one uh, question which was asked uh, how the vision group perceives the coordination effort and there were concerns that if CBSS at least tries to coordinate something, then other bodies and uh, cooperative structures would perceive CBSS suddenly trying to put in some kind of a vertical structure to put over the others. But at the same time, when we talked with CBSS secretariat and also with experts, we also consulted uh, with a um, group of uh, young uh, students and, and, and uh, representatives of youth organization, what do they think, then uh, what we discovered is that but indeed, we could count how many different bodies are mm. functioning within the Baltic Sea region. But if you would like to have at least uh, a picture of how it looks like and who is doing what and mm. how, suddenly this information is missing. Mm. So therefore, our approach was that probably uh, the CBSS should initiate some kind of, a, again, regional audit exercise mm. and also mapping exercise, at mm. least to have a comprehensive picture of everything what's going on. And after the first step, when you know exactly how the institutional or networking map looks like, mm. then you can proceed with coordination. And it definitely doesn't go go into direction that one of the bodies should be above the others, mm. but at least so it would be a regular consultation process. And if there is a secretariat with staff, so mm. it's not so difficult at least once a year mm. <laughs> to find out what is the state of affairs in other bodies. Probably it is a little bit of uh, futuristic, uh, <laughs> probably a little bit of idealistic, but we were asked to write vision. We wanted yeah. to go beyond. So, and it's definitely one of those exercises uh, where all uh, participants of the vision group were quite strong on. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, the, the uh, vision group consisted of representatives from each uh, Council of the Baltic Sea States, including also uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. And I also noted that you involved youth there was the yes. youth vision group uh, uh, that uh, yes. uh, uh, also came with input uh, to the yes. report. I read it and it, w it, was, it was quite interesting. Uh, uh, they are uh, talking about sustainable development, education, also yes. security. And also uh, they mentioned the importance of, of communication. Uh, um, better communication on, on Baltic Sea region co uh, cooperation is, is uh, maybe also necessary. Or uh, yes, this is something what uh, the group of uh, youth and also uh, vision group agreed upon, so that we are not communicating the Baltic Sea region sufficiently enough. Uh, and interestingly enough that actually we invited to have this youth group because we 
elders <laughs> were not able <laughs> to design and define what is the vision of, of mm -hmm. the Baltic mm -hmm. Sea region. Mm -hmm. So, and since mm -hmm. we are writing about the future, so it's important that those who will be living in the future, they are the ones who define the vision. Mm. I also noted that they, they, they turned attention to strength and regional identity. Um, and this is, I think, is interesting. And, and I mean, I, I compare with, with the, when I started traveling to, to, to the Baltics in, in, in the end of the 80s, and I, I think we've come, we come quite far, but, but what else can be done to, to develop this regional identity? Uh, or is it already enough developed? I mean, what do you say, Per? Uh, I definitely think that we, that we could do more, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe especially from our side of the Baltic, where we are looking in all directions, and we have to be because of, of crisis many places in the world. Mm -hmm. But we should remember that we are coming from this region, and we have so many things uh, together. We just had a, a, a small uh, round table uh, in Copenhagen, the organization, mm -hmm. where I work, where we compared a bit the uh, Arctic region and the Baltic region. And somebody said, well, it seems to be working much better in the Arctic, Arctic region because maybe we have only the Arctic Council and not all these different <laughs> uh, different groups. And maybe we feel more together, uh, together about, uh, about the issues up there, but I don't mm. know if that's uh, that's a way to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be it would be good if mm. we if we could do so. Well, but how, how strong is is, is in, in in Latvia in the Baltics? Uh, you think, Janetta, the, this uh, sense of uh, 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 regional identity. I mean, how how close are are you to to the region? I think that in Latvia this regional identity is very strong. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, there are different reasons why. First of all, because when uh, uh, Latvia was striving for uh, its independence, uh, we definitely wanted to live like Swedes, Danes, mm -hmm. and Finns, mm -hmm. so, uh, and other Nordic countries. So mm -hmm. the model of Nordicness was very much behind our political and also societal change. Another point, if we look at uh, our EU and NATO membership status right now, it's very much because of involvement of our northern neighbors. Mm -hmm. So there for Baltic Sea regions, sometimes I think for three Baltic states is even more important for our northern neighbors because mm -hmm. it's like something what is given to you for, for, for decades. Mm -hmm. While for us, it's more something new and which is definitely part of our power capability in the world. Mm. So we are interesting to the world not because of our individual identities, mm -hmm. but yeah. because we belong to northern Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have to ask also uh, maybe a, a, a last question. I noticed that uh, uh, in the report you also see um, a role possibly for, for the CBSS in engaging with Belarus. I have a special interest for mm -hmm. Belarus having spent seven, seven years there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you could, uh, if you add something on that. Yeah, no, if you use uh, purely uh, geographic terms, then, uh, and how the CBSS as a structure is defined, then Belarus belongs to the area. So since the CBSS is about engaging mm. everybody mm. who is interested in cooperating with the Baltic Sea region, so therefore CBSS is open for Belarus mm. if Belarus wants to join. Mm. Mm. Yeah. the organization. I agree. I assume you have been ambassador to uh, Belarus as well, Per, uh, uh, being I in Moscow. I would, I, 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 when I was ambassador in Moscow, I was, I was also covering Belarus. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and, and definitely, uh, we, we should try to do more for Belarus. Denmark, unfortunately, is now not uh, in Belarus. We don't have an embassy, but uh, we should have. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much Thank you. for this conversation.